Hi guys, it's John here again with another inbox review. Um, tonight I'm doing another very old kit, and as you can see from the picture in front of you, you have an AEC Matador and a famous World War II 5.5 inch artillery gun. Well, of course, the kit that I'm reviewing today is a Series 1 HO 00 scale AEC Matador on the 5.5 inch gun airfix kit from series one. Um, we'll just take this picture off and we'll do the boxing history first, get that all out of the way. Um, basically the kit was released as, as, as way back as 1966 um, on the the red stripe bag kit and this image of the Matador on 5.5 inch gun being transported over a, a pontoon bridge was used by Airfix from 1966 right through the 70s so it, it was probably there at least 15 years um, but as I said the bag kit was released originally in 1966 so that makes the kit um, about it's about 51 years old isn't it so yeah the mold's getting on a bit now so 1966 went through to the blister pack, which was released, I'll take that off there, you don't need that, which was released in 1973. Um, I always called these kits card kits, and um, I don't know why I called them card kits, probably because they were mounted on a card, but the all the parts are in a blister below the picture itself. That's the same picture image as with the bag kit on the red stripe. Um, the interesting thing about this particular packaging is that it's actually marked HO00 scale um, which of course is 176 scale. Most Airfix um, vehicles were released in HO00 scale. So 1973 the blister packs went through the majority of the 1970s and then in 1987 the kit had been off the market for a while. I'm pretty sure it was off the market for about five maybe four or five years and it was released on this type of um, packaging. Now, this type of packaging um, was actually the very, very first Heller Humbrol offering. Um, because when Airfix was owned by Panatoy, believe it or not, Panatoy did not release the Matador 5.5 inch gun on any of their boxings. So modelers had to wait till 1987 until this release was brought out. Um, so I think the kit was actually off the market from about 1982 through to 1987. It was off the market about five years. So that's the 87 release. Um, this this style here is I think this is called the Type Six, which had the like the greeny lime green Louvre sort of design on the side. Um, and that boxing went through to 1989. When a new style of box came out for Series 1 models, um, this box was released for virtually every Series 1 kit um, that you you bought uh, from Airfix. Um, with this, this style of logo, it had an elongated oval shaped Airfix logo and the 89 release had the gold yellowy um, writing on the, on the top. Uh, 1989 release went through to 1990 release when the ch format of the box was changed and they put a white border around the, the actual box, around the picture. Uh, this picture of course was used um, in the third rendition of the kit. And you have a Series 1 and 172nd scale logo. Now what is really interesting is, is that this kit was not 172nd, it was 176th. So when they released this model, I don't know why it happened, but they, they, they were printed up in 176, uh, 72nd scale. But the kit, as with most Airfix, military vehicles and tanks, they were all HO00. So they were all 176. Um, so that was ge a genuine printing error um, on behalf of, I think the company at the time was, it was still Humble and Hello in 1990. So yeah, slap on the wrist there. 1990 gave way to the 92 release. Um, this box was exactly the same as the 90 release, but it introduced the 
one flying hours logo on the box which you could cut out i don't i can't remember um what the flying hours were used i think people sent them off to get um discount vouchers or maybe even free kits from the club and, and things like that it was one of the incentive schemes to join the airfix modelers club 1992 went through to 2005 and as i said before um, airfix series one and two kits were all released in boxings of exactly the same size um, which led to an awful lot of modellers getting very disappointed when they opened the box and found that the kit inside was only a fifth the size of the box. Um, but basically this, this style and size of box was common to both Series 1 and Series 2. That went through to 2000, around about 2009, and then, sorry, 2008, and then this kit was re-released re in 2008, and the, the only real change is that the A... The A01314 serial number for the model on the 19, uh, 2002 release was actually just 01314. So the box here um, has been reutilized, and lo and behold, in the left hand corner, you've got 176 scale. <laughs> So it was a bit confusing for a few what, for a few years in the boxings. I don't even think Airfix, uh, the com well the company that owned Airfix at the time, which I, I still believe was he Hella Humbrol, um, knew what to put for scales on their military vehicles. But they are definitely double O H O one seventy six scale. So two thousand and eight led through to the current company owner, which of course is Hornby. Um, and this is the horn, the typical Hornby um, red boxing style. And these kits were released uh, from 2012 through to about 2000, and I think 2014, maybe 2015. But they definitely do not have this kit on their current catalogue. You cannot buy it from Airfix um, at the moment. But future future releases, I can't see them stopping this model. Uh, forever and ever it's it is actually a qu quite an accurate kit um, with a few issues but the actual body body shell of the truck is is actually quite sound and good uh, so that's the boxing history up through from 1966 to 2012 now we have some problems because the inbox review that I'm going to do isn't actually an airfix box um, I bought this kit second hand from eBay maybe or probably about three years ago and it's been in my stash for a while and I've just decided to get it out and bash it out and have a go at it. But the kit arrived um, not in an Airfix box, it actually arrived in a different type of box. I'll just pan the camera around so you can see. This is basically the inbox review of the kit I'm doing. So it's basically just a cardboard box and I've marked what it is on the kit. Um, but I want to go through all the usual gump that we normally go through. So I've downloaded a set of plans. Um, I actually downloaded these off Scalemates because Scalemates have the, the plans available as a download on their website. And it's basically the same as you'd get in the plans in the box if you had an Airfix kit, AO1314 code number, which is the more modern plans and a boxing of this model. Um, so at the top of the first page you've got um, United Kingdom, French, German, um, I'm guessing that's Spanish and I'm not sure what E is actually. I always thought E was es Espana but maybe not. Anyway, but they're, they're different, different languages giving you the, um, the basic outline and history of the, the AC Matador and the 5.5 inch gun. And then you scroll down to page two and you have assembly instructions. Um, these are just basic assembly instructions and um, hints and tips and safety gump um, all in the different languages. Again, there's, there's more languages there than what there was on the first page. And then you draw down and you get to the assembly icon instructions, which are here. Um, now these assembly icon instructions, they're not common to an awful lot of Airfix kits from the olden days. These are more of the modern type of icons and keys that you get in modern instructions from Airfix. Um, there are a few there that you won't be using on this kit, like um, 
option, this one here for options, symmetrical assembly, you won't be using that. Um, you won't be using times two, you won't be using crystal parts or weights required, heat with a knife, drill holes, um, but you probably will be using all of the others. So, but that's basically the keys for the instructions. Now the model itself is built through, um, according to these plans, 17 steps. But if you bought a blister pack or a car or a, a, a bag kit, I'm pretty sure this kit is built in four steps. Um, the instructions in those days were an awful lot more complicated than the simple steps that you get in modern day kits where you're only putting like five or six parts in each section. But basically section one to three is the interior of the cabin, um, including the driver. And the driver figure, again, he looks like he's going to need a wheelchair when he gets out of this truck because he's got no legs. Um, then section four, five is the exterior panels for the cabin and the radiator grill there, part 13. And then section six, seven and eight is to construct the rear body of the truck. And section 9 and 10 are the underside parts to the body shell. And then section 11 and 12 is to assemble the chassis, uh, transmission, engine parts, and the transfer box for the four-wheel drive and the diffs. And then in section 13, you're putting the exhaust system and the chassis to the body shell. You're basically marrying um, sub-assembly up to section 5 and then the sub-assembly up to section 10 to the sub-assembly up to section 12 and then you put an exhaust on onto the truck and then section 14 is to apply the wheels all the wheels on this kit rotate we'll talk about the wheels later and section 15 16 17 um, and, and oh, there is actually an option there here we, here we go um, that is to produce the 5.5 inch gun in actual fact, the option on this kit is um, a bit of a problem because they're asking you not to cement the trestle legs on the gun, but then they're asking you to cement the trestle leg support feet into the correct position when the gun trestle legs are, sp are spread, or to put them in the upright position or stowed position when the gun trestle legs are um, put together for transit. So it makes you wonder why they ask you to um, to have the trestle legs moving at all, but they are, they are actually making you put the trestle legs and do not cement them into position. Um, so that's basically the instruction guide. I'll just scroll down to the last section on the instructions. This is what you would normally get on the back of one of the Hornby release uh, red boxes offerings you'd get the um, the version that comes with the kit. There's only one version that comes with the kit, but I'm going to tell you something which is interesting. The truck is called Gazala, and I've actually found photographs of Gazala serving the British Army during World War II. So this truck actually existed. I don't think it still exists now, um, but if somebody knows of its whereabouts in a museum, please feel free to comment. It, I, I would fi find it quite interesting to know that. Um, but I've definitely got photographs of Gazala, uh, the named Matador, in service with the British Army during World War II. Um, but the photos I've got, it, uh, it's not towing a gun, it's towing something else, uh, which is interesting. But there you go. So that's the instructions. Um, the other thing I haven't got with this model are the decals. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and enlarge these and then bring the decal sheet, oh I can't do that, that's a bit of a shame, can't do that. Basically all I can do is show you what the decal sheet consists of. It's basically got two stars, um, there's two badges and a registration number and two more badges here and another registration number that goes up there. So basically there's only about seven um, decals, but I do know that in the modern boxings of the Matador and 5.5 inch guns, the decal sheet is really good. 
Um, Airfix decals obviously have suffered um, when you get the early renditions in the fact that the decals themselves weren't fantastic quality and as they've aged they often become unusable um, but if you want to build this kit you're better off um, and um, it's, it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a balance because the older the mould the, the worse the quality of the parts are in the kit but the decal sheets in the newer renditions of this kit are fantastic whereas if you want the sharper parts the decal sheets aren't that great um, so it's, that's, that's always the balance you have to, uh, you have to weigh up. So I'm going to leave you, let's just take that off, I'm going to leave you with an image of the Matador truck. There we go. That gives you an idea of um, the type of body shell that you can get on this vehicle. Um, but I am going to talk about the issues there are with this model. And there are a number of quite serious issues, but to the inexperienced modeler or the modeler that's not really interested in entering vehicles into competitions and maybe trying their best to produce a really authentic diorama, the issues that are with this model aren't really that serious, but to a, a, an authentic modeler they are. They've, they're quite serious indeed. So what I'll do, I'll, um, I'll just pull the camera round so that you can get a good idea of what um, doing an inbox review on here. That's my fabulous non airfix issue box. <laughs> so I bought this second hand, and one of the problems sometimes of buying second hand is that you don't always get everything that you should be getting because people have a habit of not actually knowing too much about modelling as a, as a trade or modelling as an industry and they end up sending you stuff that isn't complete and this was definitely the case here um, we'll get the parts out um, so I can go through the parts with you and as I go through the parts on the screws um, <clears throat> yeah, we'll talk about the issues that there are with this kit they aren't serious, but they are, there are a few issues here and there. Right, you'll notice that this kit's sprue plastic parts are green. And lo and behold, I've got a brown part here. This is to replace one of the parts that is missing in the kit. And it's the only part that's missing in the kit. And it's a part that it won't fit exactly at the moment. But with a little bit of trimming and sanding, it will actually fit pretty damn perfect so that is one of the parts in the kit um, which I had to fabricate from something else um, right we'll deal first of all the kit comes in four sprues it's all green plastic quite a typical color for uh, military vehicles and tanks that Airfix produced in series one and two um, and what I'll do I'll I'll go through the loose parts first because the loose parts are, are quite interesting. First of all, this is a nice sizable top of the body. Um, the body shell on this kit is of a standard box type cargo carriage body unit that was very, very commonplace with a C Matador 7, the British Army, circa World War II. What is also interesting is that the Matador didn't stop serving the British Army when the war finished. It actually served the, the BA right the way through until the late 50s and actually as late as 1961. I think some of the last vehicles were getting replaced in 1961-62. And this type of body shell was used very, very commonly throughout its entire service history. And it's basically... Uh, a box tray on a floor pan that sits on top of the uh, chassis and then you have either a, a framework above it or another set of uh, sidewalls that fit onto the box tray and this roof sat on the top of the secondary uh, the secondary units that sat above the box tray unit I'll explain to you what the box tray unit is in a minute but this is representing a canvas top cover and the, the actual uh, texture on the part is actually quite good. You know, 
when you paint that matte, I think that would look like canvas. It's supposed to denote stretched canvas, which it's not bad. It's not that bad at all. So that's the roof part. I'm quite pleased with that. This is the back of the cab. That's the exterior of the back of the cab. And that's the interior of the back of the cab with the backs of the seats. Um, I think it goes that way up. And the seats fit onto these little location lugs here. And that's the, that's the front back of the seat there. And they're moulded into the back panel of the cab. And that's quite nicely rendered as well. There, there's a couple of, in, well, there's three injection mould marks here, which will have to be removed. Um, Airfix, I'll have to slap your hand again. I don't know if you can see them there, but they're quite apparent. Um, those injection marks, which are, of course, the, the parts of the mould where you spray the plastic into to produce the actual sprue of plastic parts. And there's three of them on the inside edge of that cab bulkhead. You've also got a driver. Now, this particular driver figure is one of the first issues you have with the Airfix Matador. Because he hasn't got any legs, as you can see. And the top of the cab is actually open. It's extensively glazed. So you're going to be able to see through the front and side windows of this kit to see that he doesn't have any legs. Whoops keep dropping this guy because he's quite small but the main problem with this particular driver figure is that he is serving in the British Army but he has an American helmet on um, yeah he should have a berry <laughs> don't know why they've done that but they have he has a US Army service hard hat helmet on so that is incorrect um, to be honest with you, I think I'm going to omit him from the kit altogether. I think the kit will actually be more authentic and look better without him. Um, because you're going to see the fact that he has no legs. This part here is actually one of the cab seats, one of the seat cushions. Um, there's the cab back. Um, I'm pretty sure it's one of the seat cushions. It goes like sort of like that. Can you see? It's sort of like that, and that, that goes against the to produce a seat there on the rear bulkhead. Um, that type of method of producing a seat in cabs is quite common with a lot of Airfix kits. This is the bottom bogey assembly um, for the 5.5 inch gun, and it comes with the axle built into the mould, and these holes here in between that blade section are the parts that you actually locate the trestle legs um, two with two other parts which comprise the recoil springs for the actual piece of the gun um, and there isn't an issue with the actual main unit of the gun but there is an issue with the gun and there's an issue with something else which is quite serious but we'll talk about that this is the part that I actually substituted for part 23 which is missing which is one of the upper casemates for the body shell um, these will need these corner sections removing and this blade part here will have to be sanded down and removed and then that part should pretty much fit quite quite well and easily as a substitute part and I'm going to put this part on the inside of the cab because that will be plain but it actually goes in between the rear bulkhead <laughs> like this it will go about here between the rear bulkhead and the front of the of the body shell so that should fit together and that should be nice easy uh, fabricated part for me which will replace the part that's missing this is one of the recoil springs and gun and trestle mounts on the 5.5 inch gun and that's quite nicely reproduced with the um, mechanism for elevating the gun there built into the part it's actually molded into the part and the part itself um, there is an injection mold part line it's a sinkhole and there's an injection mold line but they're quite they're not that bad the, the injection mold line is flush with the part and the sinkhole isn't really going to be an issue because it's going to be covered up by an awful lot of the artillery piece the 5.5 inch gun itself that sits in between those two parts so that's not going to be an issue um, 
we'll just spread out here and get these four sprues off for you. Um, I'm not going to individually go through each part because I think that would be a bit daft, but I'm going to ID some of the important parts here. This is the first sprue. This comprises the base of the cab here, which is quite nicely moulded. There's quite a lot of flash on this part, but you have to understand that I think this kit probably would have come out of the one of the 1990s issue boxes, you know, the large ones that are, that are the same size as Series 2 boxes. Uh, so there is going to be quite a bit of flash here and there. You've got the top of the fuel tank here, and there's the two differentials which has a large tab mould and there's one of the prop shafts there with, the, with the, um, the mount into the diff and then you've got the trestle legs here for the gun and the top of the cab with the access hole through the top and that was quite common on most Matadors, that access hole was very common on most of them. But the first thing I want to talk about is this, this gun trestle pair here now, if you look very carefully at this part, you've got two small eyes here and two quite large ones. Well, these two small eyes here are the ones that the... There's two, two parts like this. Whoops. There's two parts like this, right, with the recoil springs on them. And they're basically going to go through this trestle like this and then cement into the, the bottom of the trestle underneath so that the trestle legs will open and close. The problem is is that these rings at the end of the gun, the, these are the ends of the trestles on the gun, these rings, these are towing rings and they're absolutely enormous. On the real gun <laughs> you could probably stand, if they were like this, you could probably stand a man inside each one of those rings um, without any problem whatsoever and they just weren't like this they they were probably the towing rings would have probably have been smaller than these location hole rings here for the uh, the recoil sections of the parts of the gun these tr these tr uh, towing rings would have been much much smaller uh, probably smaller than these as i said so that's one of the first issues with the actual kit um, the second issue obviously is the american helmet on the on the driver figure um, I don't know, can you see that? A little bit of burr on the top, but he's incorrect as well. Now we've got <clears throat> sprue 2, which comprises of the four box section ends and the one that's missing, that's part 23. Here's the bottom of the sump of the engine and gearbox. That's the forward section of the cabin, exterior side, and that's interior side. And again, you've got two massive injection holes, which will probably need to be removed. And then you've got the rear mud guards that go underneath the body unit. And then you've got the third issue with this gun, with this kit rather, and it relates to the gun itself. Uh, don't worry about this tab. This tab's got to come off on the end. That's not an issue. That will, that will be removed as part of the kit to, be, to remove that. But basically this gun is too thick and too long. It needs to have a little bit shaved off the end and it needs to have quite a bit removed off the circumference of the piece itself. Because the gun itself, um, I think it would be about a six and a half inch gun rather than a five and a half inch gun. So that would, for an experienced modeler, that would probably have to be sorted out. Um, you've also got an instrument dashboard here, which goes inside the cab and four leaf springs and the two parts of the exhaust system there and that looks like one of the, the prop shafts that go from the transfer box to probably the rear diff. Um, so that's, that's that sprue. Um, not really an issue with that sprue at all, apart from the gun. Um, this sprue here is sprue 3. You've got your four wheel hubs here get them into camera view. Four wheel hubs. You've got a steering wheel. That's quite nicely moulded. There's your transfer box to provide drive for the four wheels. 
and then you've got some other odds and ends here and these are the trestle feet which I told you about um, you either glue those in the lowered position or in the raised position for transport um, which is a bit daft because the trestle legs move in and out so you'd have to detach them and put them on the top to put the legs together and put them underneath to put the legs and spread them apart so that's that is actually a technical fault with the kit but there's not probably an awful lot you can do about that um, that's the forward grill that's quite nicely molded if I can bring that into camera shot quite like that that will paint up nice this is the engine cover for the inside of the cab and this is the body shell base that's the bit the chassis gets glued to um, and then you've got the side exterior panels for the cab and that's the other um, recoil spring for the gun this, these springs are put on the, on the gun to reduce the amount of recoil and movement of the gun on the ground when you fired it. Um, so again, that's quite a nicely rendered, relatively fresh, flash-free um, sprue there. There is a little bit of flash on the base of the body shell, but I would come to expect that when you think that this kit is... I mean, when this mold was moulded... Uh, when this mould was made, rather, the kit was... the mould was probably in the region of... I would say 35 years old at least so it was it was showing its age now then um, yeah now you've got quite a lot of parts here <clears throat> that's another one of the parts that go inside the cab to form the cushion of the front seat and these these all go underneath the body shell base and then you've got these four panels which go lengthways down the length of the of the body shell on either side and then you've got the Matador chassis, which again is quite nicely moulded, um, again relatively flash free, which isn't an issue, but at the back of this chassis, I'm not sure if it's the back or the front, um, I'm not sure whether you adhere another hook to the front or the back, but there is supposed to be a hook at both ends, front and back, um, <clears throat> one for the gun and one for the winch. Now the winch is totally missing off this kit. You should normally have a winch at the front just under the grill and it's missing. It's not part of the model at all. So that is another feature that's a problem with this kit. The, but the other main issue, I don't know if I can bring that into camera shot, but can you see the size of that hook on the front of the chassis there? That hook is about two times too big. And that should really be reduced in size, but it's not really an issue that as a, an experienced modeler or a, maybe a young modeler I would be too bothered about and the major issue this kit has is with the wheels you see the wheels for the gun are actually bigger than the wheels on the truck and the wheels on the truck are too small as well so the wheels for the gun are really really too small um, if you look at images of the Matador towing the 5.5 inch gun and make sure you check that it's the 5.5 inch because it did a four and a half inch gun version the 5.5 was an upgrade of the original 4.5 inch gun but the the wheels that the gun rides on are bigger than the wheels that the truck rides on and yet the wheels on this model are too small um, they're probably more like 178th or maybe 80th scale. They're slightly too small. They need to be made larger. But obviously, making them larger, the only real easy way you can do that is to get aftermarket parts and get them resin, um, which would make, and it has, I've seen reviews on, on um, YouTube and other media sites, where they've used resin wheels on both the truck and the gun and it doesn't half make a difference to the vehicle the, it just looks a hell of a lot better um, you can see the image of this truck here the wheels on the Matador are huge um, also these two lights at the front here these are omitted from the model as well so those are not part of the airfix kit there's no rear view mirrors on the airfix kit 
and there's no glazing. Now, when I build this kit, I'm thinking about putting some glazing into this kit uh, by using some clear plastic card, which will be interesting. I've, I've never done it before on a small model, but I'm going to have a bash, and then hopefully we can see how that turns out. So that's the um, inbox review. Um, I just want to quickly... I know that's a lovely Hellcat image, I know. I just want to quickly go through... Um, the technical data on the kit so that we can just roll this video up and get it sorted. Um, the, the review is on the Airfix AEC Matador um, 5.5 inch gun. The kit's produced in Series 1 in 00HO scale 176 and its original release date was 1966. The kit comprises of 67 green parts on four sprues and there is decals for one version. The cost of the kit overall, um, in my opinion, isn't that bad, uh, when, especially when you think the kit is actually quite good um, in terms of the, the body and cab, uh, they're actually quite accurate. Um, so the cost, the cost for a bag or blister pack is, it can be anything between four to eight pound. And that's about what they sell for. If the, if the person who's selling the, the item is asking more, it doesn't usually sell for more than eight quid. But if you go for a boxed model, the average cost is between six and ten pound. But again, some are on sale for as much as 18 quid, but they don't ever sell at this price. So I've never seen a Matador on 5.5 inch gun sell for much more than, say, 11 quid. Uh, first impressions of the model? Well, the kit has a lot of parts, and it's quite easy and cheap to acquire. It's good for conversions and for dioramas. The body shell and the cab are actually quite accurate. And for a serious model who's an experienced model, you know, to get hold of the, the resin wheels, um, it, it would make this kit incredibly good for conversion. Um, and you can also, because you've got a base for the box body shell, the base is separate to the rest of the, the box body. You can actually use that base for an awful lot of different types of conversions. And the chassis will accommodate different types of conversions as well. I've seen um, models converted with the Airfix Coles Crane uh, recovery unit. Um, I've seen it with flatbeds. I've seen it with um, different styles of rear body shells. Um, the coach work, and I've seen, I've seen kits with lots of different types of coach and body kits on the back. Um, and I've also seen a crash tender built out of a, out of a Matador. The crash tenders tended to serve post-World War II. Um, and they operated um, usually on bomber bases, uh, where the vehicle, it wasn't so important to get the vehicle to and from A, uh, from a to B as you know, you had a lot of advanced warning of an aircraft coming in in trouble. Um, issues with this model. The wheels and tyres on both the gun and the truck are slightly too small, but especially the gun. The gun's tyres are supposed to be much bigger. Um, and the gun itself is too thick and it's too long. And the towing rings on the trestle legs, are, are, they're absolutely ridiculous. But the kit is okay for most types of modellers. Um, as the kit has no real fit issues whatsoever. I remember building this kit several times when I was younger. My brother built this kit several times when, when, uh, when I was younger. Lots of my friends who were in modelling built this kit and none of them reported any fit issues whatsoever. And I'm not expecting to have any with this one. So I hope this video has been of some use. Um, and I will be producing a update and final reveal build video so hopefully um, you can get to get to see what what you can produce with this particular model straight out of the box I'm not going to mess around too much with it I'm just going to build it straight out of the box and hopefully um, you know if you're after an AEC Matador model the Airfix kit is quite a good a good option so good luck out there good modeling if you like the video don't forget to give me a like um, if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe. Um, if you like what you see, that is. <laughs> uh, and I'll see you again for the next video. 
Paša, nema. Dobar.